Hey, what is going on? My name is Daniel and I'm 19 from South Texas and today I wanted to make a video explaining five mistakes that we all need to avoid in our 20s. I've been doing extensive research on not just this topic but in the many aspects of self-improvement and it's come to my attention that not many of us are hearing about these things. So I'm going to reach out to as many of you as I can and educate you about the many aspects of life. The mistakes that I will be explaining today are not typically targeted at everyone or a certain age group. The last thing I want to do is generalize, but I do want you to take a moment to be honest with yourself and go into this with an open mindset. Don't be too hard on yourself if you are committing one of these, just know that as long as you're self-aware of it and you're planning to make a change, then that's a good start. Alright, let's start with number one and that is following the crowd. This is when you have to do something but you have no clue or direction on your own, so you just decide to do what everyone else is doing. It seem bad, for example, you might think, oh well everyone says this is the best college to go to, so I should go too. Now those are just the opinions of others. It might be a good college for them and what they plan on doing, but maybe not for you. So you have to understand that you have to do your own research and you will narrow a decision down a lot better and not be blind to all the other opportunities out there. You're going to have to start thinking more long term and become more independent because at the end of the day, everyone else will be hitting away in their own lives and you could begin to feel lost with yours because maybe you were making solemnly similar decisions to someone else's life rather than your own. Don't get me wrong, you can do this, but only if someone has the lifestyle that you want, then by all means you can look towards them as a mentor and ask them for advice. Although this is only if you've already taken the time to consider every other opportunity out there, and most importantly, for you not to fall into the peer pressure that is following the crowd. Now, I myself have made this mistake. My senior year, I had no idea what I wanted to do for a career choice. I had a vague idea of being in band made me consider being a music teacher, being in engineering made me consider the STEM field, and being advanced in math, science, and English made me consider wanting to be a teacher. Now band being the one where I spent more of my time in, is where I made most of my friends, and in every other program I felt like an outsider. So I only considered what my brand's friends were doing, and which was studying music at the University of San Marcos, Texas, but I really wasn't feeling well about it. Since I was so diversified, I only saw music as a side thing. Another thing was that I was not accepted into the music program, but really if I was at all passionate about becoming a music teacher, I would have just not, you know, given up. I would have just tried again the following year, take more music classes and make sure that I get into the program. I sit there at orientation looking at the rejection email that I received on my phone and think, oh crap. I can't do what my friends are doing, so now I have to be on my own. So I ended up taking some of my basics that semester, and by the time it was over, I come to realize, what am I doing just wasting my time, accumulating debt, I'm all alone, and I'm not even excited to be here anymore. By the start of the new semester, I just end up dropping out the second week of school and decided to come back to my hometown here in South Texas to just take some time to truly learn about myself and what it is that I want to do. It was a drastic change, but I'm glad I did it and that I catch myself now rather than four years from now following the crowd. All right, so number two is waiting for things to happen. This next one is crucial. You cannot just stay where you are and wait for the things that you want to just magically appear in front of you. That would be nice, but that's just not gonna happen. Like a quote from Dr. Shoes, unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is gonna get better. It's not. And in this case, you're the only one that can control majority, if not all of your lifestyle. Yeah, I mean, there's some things that you can't control there that are way out of your reach, but you can always just find a way around it and see what best fits you. Or you just end up finding excuses. Let's give an example here. Say you want to build an amazing body or physique. Well, you're not just going to instantly wake up one day with that body, unless you're Captain America. If you do decide on wanting to do something, then you're going to have to make a change. Stick to a schedule, be consistent, then and only then will you start to see the results that you want. But I mean, let's be realistic here, and many of us follow through. The thought of all this is overwhelming, and it might make some push it off or just quit after a few days. And that's understandable. We as humans are creatures of habit and prefer to stay in our comfort zones. So it's natural to want to avoid or quit these drastic changes. So the way to overcome this is by beginning to make one small change to your routine. And once you're able to lock that one down, 
then you can begin to add other small changes one at a time and eventually you're gonna be seeing results that you wanted from the start or at least you're gonna be on your way making progress I learned this from my own experience I tried working out cooking healthy and taking cold showers but little by little I began slacking away to make myself feel accomplished I actually came up with a compromise which was to at least stick to one thing which was just a couple push-ups in the morning and I was able to get this down once I got that I was able to begin adding more things like for example eating a healthy breakfast and thankfully this has progressed now up to where I can actually stick to these changes in my daily routine so I encourage you to stop waiting for things to happen and you make them happen because you need to take control of yourself and you will instantly see what you could be missing out on number three is focusing only on money this one's a bit harsh because we all want to make money and be financially free. The truth is, we need money to survive in our economy. Almost everything requires it. Lots of problems can be solved by it. But here's the catch. Money isn't easy to come by or at least to be financially stable. There is a certain foundation of things that have to be paid in order for us to barely get by. For example, let's say you get paid $1,000 every month. Now let's subtract the expenses that go along with that. $500 could be for rent with utilities, the phone bill could be about $100, insurances another $100, food and gas estimated $100, and car payment the rest which is $200. And now you are left with $0 each month. If you want to be financially stable here, good luck because you are one major expense from going into debt or if your job ends, you're gonna be struggling to make the payment. On the side note here, this is what is known to be living paycheck to paycheck, but that's a whole nother topic. The concept here, however, is that nobody wants to live in this scenario. So what is it to do but find a career that promises high income? It's good that you're taking initiative on this matter, but you wanna be careful because this could distract or blind you from finding your passion or something that you really might enjoy doing. Many of you have probably heard the phrase, do something you love and the money will follow. Well, in reality, the odds of that happening for you to be financially successful with it are very slim. If it's not providing you with a good source of income, then you know you need to put that on the side and focus on something that will. That may sound a little contradicting, but in this scenario, it's really not because you're focusing on money as a necessity rather than a goal but then again doing something you love or creative is very important because it keeps your mind sharp so you should still have it in your daily life oh wait but making a lot of money will make me happy and i'll love that does money buy happiness or does poverty buy happiness it's pretty obvious that having money will solve a lot of your problems and provide you with comfort dan Locke explains this and that we should focus on making money or profit as he calls it first and get that out of the way. Then you'll be at a comfortable position for money to provide you with more opportunities to invest in yourself, try new things and truly find your passion or expand on it. If you are able to combine these two, then more power to you. After this, you will be able to find your purpose in life if you haven't already. Just make sure that you are not focusing only on money. Number four, seeking validation and approval. This is simple yet a bit challenging. You yourself could be going out of your way to be accepted by others once again with peer pressure. This is unhealthy because that means you don't respect yourself enough to be independent but rather dependent. Say everyone's talking about how cool the new Air Jordans are and you think oh well everyone thinks they're cool I must get them. So you end up going out of your way for them possibly even stealing the money or the shoes themselves. So here you are making a decision so other people can give you respect rather than you give yourself respect. Alongside of that you could get influenced up to the point where you sacrifice your own morals. For example say you hang out with your friends and everyone's drinking. Now you to yourself you might think about that promise you made to never drink. But everyone's trying to convince you to take a drink. Peer pressure gets to you and there go your morals. Strip yourself away from that peer pressure. Develop your own opinions and determine what makes you happy. So what should you do? Well you could say the best mentality to have is where you don't care about how you look, act or say, but this approach is too extreme. While you should have a foundational structure of this mindset, you're gonna have to tailor yourself to our society. Yeah I know that sounds controversial to what I just said, but let's face it, we are all judged from head to toe uh, by our actions, 
how we speak, how we, our physical appearances are, and how we present ourselves. That's just how society's rules play out. By taking this into consideration, you can begin to experiment with new things and see what your preferences are. There's also nothing wrong with asking for advice, but just make sure the final decision rolls out to be yours in becoming the best version of yourself without much seeking validation and approval. Number five, not taking risks. Everything I've said revolves around and ties in with this. Instead of following the crowd, you will be stepping out and going off on your own. Instead of waiting for things to happen, you're gonna go out there and make them happen. You will create a plan for yourself to be financially stable and find something you have a passion for. You will be creating the best version of yourself. There was a survey going around asking elders at their deathbed how their life turned out. And most of them said something along the lines of not regretting what they did, but what they didn't do. This type of advice is to help you prevent and avoid these kind of mistakes. The best advice is from those you're gonna be or you want to be similar to. They will help you save time because they've already tried and failed and found what works. So you can benefit from that. And now you have a more strategic way to take risks. Whether you want to make a change or not, that is totally up to you. It may be overwhelming being bombarded with all this information and make you push it off. But don't worry, start with something simple. Start by cleaning your room. The different environment will make you open your mind and encourage you to make some changes to your lifestyle or at least experiment with some. Avoid these mistakes or at least be self-aware of them and you'll be instantly on a better path. All right, that's going to be it for this video. Make sure to go check out Dan Locke's channel. If you have any questions, let me know and I'll try to answer them as best as I can or guide you in the right direction. Until next time, peace.